Hi there. It's Jody Fitzgerald here with Fitz Your Dog Training. I'm here today with Miranda Wimbush. She is a fellow dog trainer and expert, and she has um, is also a mother and a married, so a busy, busy lady and has a business. Her business, her dog training is the, mindf the, can the Mindful Canine. And that is such a great name for this day and age where we're thinking so much more about the dog and fitting the dog into our lives. And so Miranda has agreed to come today to talk about meditation and being a different way of helping us to be with our dogs. And I'm so glad you came today. I can't wait to hear what your wonderful things that you can tell us and help us to get closer with our Absolutely. dogs. Thanks so much for having me, Jody. I really appreciate the platform and yeah, all the great stuff that you do for, for people and dogs as well. Thank it's you. definitely amazing. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I, you know, I, I, first of all, I would just love to hear how you got into, into working with dogs. I mean, it's usually everybody has a special story that got them to this place now. And I'd love to hear, you know, a little version of what's Miranda's past. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I've been really always been about animals, like ever since I was very, very young. Um, just you know, all the pictures of me as a child are surrounded by various animals or my parents tell me that I used to go and run up to dogs in the street which is not something I'd ever advise a parent letting a child do but I seem to just have this magnetism and this way with animals since I was very young um and so yeah I I grew always we grew up I grew up very rurally we always had animals so we always had um dogs and then when I was in my teens I convinced my parents to adopt a, a stray husky that showed up at our doorstep um, that was my first, my first dog, Zephy. Um, and she was very a husky, as you, as you know, very independent, you know, um, strong, strong willed and just had her own, had her own. And I didn't know anything about training and, um, you know, it was very different back then how we kept dogs that were outside. They were very much kind of just, um, they were pets and, but, but, um, not so much members of the family. And so um, I remember not knowing how to communicate with her, not knowing how to work with her. And so I started trying to learn about it um, and got out books from the library. And, and I remember being so frustrated with her because, you know, she was independent. She would just run off. She wouldn't listen to me. Um, she would just do her own thing. And I would get angry with her. And it, obviously that didn't help. Um, and so, yeah, I was looking for ways to communicate with her. A lot of the methods that I read about I tried like a choke collar and then I was like, okay, this doesn't feel good. This it, a isn't working and it, you know, it didn't make me feel good. Um, so I ended up finding, I found a local um, person who did agility classes actually. And she took me in kind of started to introduce me to, she was like one of my first mentors introduced me to um, the world of positive reinforcement training. And Zephy like did amazing with that. Like she was, um, yeah, she just blossomed. Like she, she loved learning. She, I taught her all different kinds of tricks. We did agility. She wasn't, she wasn't a huge fan of agility. She was, you know, she did it, but like she would kind of, you know, do a couple obstacles and wander off on her own little, <laughs> her own little track. Husky, um, husky, dog, but, husky, husky business. <laughs> yeah. Husky, husky stuff. So, but we ended up, um, really bonding and I, you know, I learned how to understand her and, um, and teach her and she was a brilliant dog right it wasn't about it was just about finding what motivated her which was food she was incredibly food motivated um and um you know learning on her level what what worked and so that you know that really springboarded my like okay there is a way um and um my mentor kind of she she would lend me books and she, i remember reading like first editions of like the clicker journal like this is back before the internet was really, there was much on the internet. So she let me all her books, like, um, and so I, I started reading and kind of learning everything I could. And um, this is the very long version of the story. <laughs> well, I love it. <laughs> yeah, because... And then from there, I would, I started volunteering all different, I volunteered at an animal shelter, um, vet clinics, kind of got a lot of different experience um, and took in another rescue who became my agility dog. Um and he was an abused rescue. He'd been beaten and he had a, he had, he was had a dicey past and some well, behavioral challenges from that, but agility really, he really helped boost his confidence and 
I was able to travel and show with him and stuff. Um, amazing. It's amazing what it can do. Yeah. It, yeah, it really is. And so I just kind of kept learning and, and growing and um, really enjoyed it. And that's kind of where I found my place. Um, yeah. And so through that, you know, every dog we have kind of teaches us something new. And um, I, yeah, I just kind of continued. And then I ended up, um, I ended up becoming a vet tech and then did an apprenticeship with a trainer and kind of grew in a couple of different areas, worked in really all different capacities of animal um, animal care. And yeah, I think that everything we do adds to our experience. So, um, you know, it's, it's not about one, there's not always one path. I feel like there's many different paths and it's recognizing, okay, now my path is going a slightly different direction. And so, um, yeah, in most recent history, I've been, I've just become more passionate about the human end of the leash um, helping people, you know, helping dogs and helping the people, um, helping them communicate and then helping, um, just overall boost quality of life. Um, and it's, it's, you know, my own journey as well, um, recognizing how important, um, in all aspects of our life, our own self-care and taking time every day to be, to, to be in nature and whatever helps you reset and rebalance. Um, I feel like, we're really out of balance these days because we're so busy um and there's so much to do um and it's it's just and then our dogs you know suffer those the consequences as well um of not maybe living in you know us being stressed out or them not they're not needs are not being met because we're not even meeting our own needs so um especially right now with all you know with the world it's true it's absolutely they're feeling the stress that we're feeling Mm mm-hmm yeah, I definitely, I definitely see that. And, uh, you know, I've seen it with, you know, I've seen it with myself and my own animals and then with clients animals as well. And, um, you know, how they, if they just take time to help their dog, like go out on a, a walk in the woods and you know, on a long leash, maybe, or, um, do a meditation or, um, just find ways that they can connect, um, just on a, on a, just on a really simple level. Um, and not asking, not no, with no expectation, not asking, not demanding. Like, um, I feel like people have kind of a trans, sometimes a transactional relationship um, with their dogs in that it's, you know, um, I do this for you. So you, you know, what can you do for me? Um, the kind of the, and, and if, if we just boil it down to relationship relationship is about it's not transactional it's not you know I'm gonna do this so I can get something back from you right um it's about just being together and spending time together and then um being and being starting. present yeah In and the then moment. that understanding and that trust is built from that those just those times where you just spend sitting with your dog or going on a going on a, a walk in nature with them it's, it's therapeutic too. It's really such a nice experience to connect with your dog. And I, I would love to have more people do it and spend time focusing on it. And, and um, it's, a, it's a learning, no demanding, like you say, just, just being present and being in the moment. And I, I often have even said like being with a friend, right? You know, you're just sitting with a friend. You're not asking them to do a bunch of stuff. You're just, and they can sit however they want to sit. Right. And, and, yeah. and just giving that safe and comfort and, and atmosphere to just relax and be together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's that just allowing them and allowing them to be who they are now. And, and I find this challenging because with, you know, as like, you know, we're both trainers and as with that comes, you know, people reaching out with, um, questions are on how do I change this? Or I don't like this, this, my dog does this, this is, and I find a lot of what I do is just normalizing what is, what is dog behavior? What, you know, um, yeah. what they're, you know, a lot of times it's just normalizing. Okay. That is what dogs do. And yes, we can, we can do training, but a lot of it is just about adjusting expectations and then also meeting their needs. Um, figure out what, you know, why they're, why they're doing something um and figuring out how can we how can we have help them meet this need in a more appropriate way maybe that's more acceptable to the person but but 
at the same time, there needs to be a process of accepting that that is the dog that you have. Um, just like, you know, and whenever you're in a relationship and you're trying to change the other member of the, you know, the other side of the relationship, there's always friction, right? It never ends, you know, it never ends well because there's just discordance and you're just frustrated and, and there has to be like, I, um, I sometimes talk to people about like a grief cycle when, um, and it sounds maybe dramatic to say that, um, but when you, especially if you have a dog that has maybe a behavioral concern, like reactivity or aggression, um, the first step is got to be processing that this is, this is how it is and getting to a place of accepting where you're at because change only happens through acceptance. Um, the more you're in, you know, kind of resistance about why isn't it different uh, or this is not the dog I wanted or, you know, um, the, the less possible it is for anything to shift and things can shift. Like, you know, there's a lot of things we can do with, um, you know, adjusting lifestyle and, you know, behavior modification to help, but only if it comes from a space of um, acceptance. Yes. Yes. Starting with the dog that's in front of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do like, I, it's hard not to compare it to children. But, you know, and that children are, you get what you get. I mean, you're going to do everything you can to shape them the way, but there's still, no matter what, there's, you can't control what they're going to ultimately become. You don't want to control what they're going to, going to become Absolutely. and to do. And yeah. it's the same, it's similar with dogs. We just, you know, yeah. I mean, they have, you start with what's in front of you and you work with it. And especially when we work with so many rescues, you know, that's, that, that's, that's uh -huh. why even just starting in that in that in that calming just being together space is the beginning to understanding all the rest but you still yeah. like you say you have to accept what you have to start with yeah and it's tough yeah oh it's absolutely and I, I i see that correlation so much um with children and dogs and i um i always tread lightly on that waters of of using those comparisons but definitely people have children they can understand that and I see it so much with my own son um, and uh, I'll share just a short story with you. Like the, on Monday we were, we, I really wanted to go out to the woods. So I reset, I'm introverted. I reset by being in nature and I really like going out in nature and my son is very extroverted. And so he prefers to like do busy stuff, like go, you know, go meet people and do things and exciting things like, you know, go to a science center or something. And so um, I was, you know, I wanted to go out to the woods and he didn't want to go to the woods and we just had this, we were just butting heads. And, and anyways, later on, we talked about it after, after the fact. And, and I just came to a realization that we're just very different people. And, you know, because he's able to talk to me, he was able to communicate that he does better if he knows things are coming up in advance and not if things are like, if I suddenly say, let's go do this, especially if it's something, you know, that's not his favorite thing to do though he does love it when we get to the woods. Um, and so it just made me realize, and I, I kind of thought about our dogs as well. I was thinking, you know, so many times we have an idea of what, you know, what that something should be like. Um, and, you know, we also need to give them space to ask them is that, you know, how is this for you? Is this, does this work for you? Right. Um, and sometimes that's, not we can't communicate them verbally we can look at their body language or we can look at um you know what you know how enthusiastic they are to do something we can give them you know a bit of choice in the matter when we and kids to, right? and kids are um, so because they are to, yeah they'll really show you how they feel <laughs> right oh like, yeah kids yeah will, kids Absolutely. will show you they, they'll yeah. they'll let you know when and dogs do it's just a matter of learning it and learning to recognize it and and yeah it is a comparison that's that's mm -hmm. that's so important eh? Yeah. yeah your little boys they get yeah. to be their own person but it, it always starts with that yeah sorry <laughs> we kind of were over each other there for a second i think there's a bit of a lag um yeah for, yeah I, would, I love what you said as well about just um being together because that's you know, especially if there is um, some friction or some breakdown in relationship, it always comes back to, you know, what do you enjoy doing? Like, what do you enjoy about your dog, right? And um, 
And sometimes um, that's not the, what the person enjoys doing is maybe not what the dog thinks of as um, is always, you know, fun, right? And so it's getting, it's like, what do you enjoy doing? What does your dog enjoy doing? And can we get you on the same page where you're doing something that both of you enjoy, yeah. right? So that it is relationship building. And it's not like I had um, a client with a really young, um, like retriever mix who was just very understimulated because he just had really, really high play and, you know, enrichment and exercise needs and his guardian was older. And so when I asked them, like, what do you like doing? And what does Jimmy like doing? And she was like, and we had talked about kind of increasing his, his enrichment and all of that. And she said, oh, I like just kind of hanging out and sitting with him. And yes, well, there's, we, we chatted about just being with our dogs and yeah, there is value there, but for a dog that's high, you know, high, young and high interaction and, and she kind of realized, okay, what I enjoy doing with him and what he enjoys doing is not the same. So kind of meeting so that, you know, and so it's like a, a way of getting them on the same page so that there is some activities like that they both enjoy doing. Yeah. And then that, you know, that, that is where it's going to really benefit both. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a leg. Mm-hmm. I think I'm in a popular internet neighborhood right now, right now. It's a oh, cottage, yeah. it's a cottage yeah. area, so hopefully it's not too bad. But, you know, and that's why, that's how I started going, like sitting on the mat with my dog is because that's a great place to learn what your dog does like to do and a good place to start even play. Yeah. right once you're in that good state of mind like that's yep. that's that's what really got me into realizing and then um you know like like being doing helps listening to tapes and and being mindful and, and meditating myself I realized mm-hmm. that there is a connection um because my dogs join me <laughs> you know with yoga and everything right if I if they, and yeah I just feel like it's such a connecting and bonding time like you don't even realize how much is happening there when your dog can actually just sit and relax with you and you can feel their tension come out of their body and then be themselves. It's just, it's, it feels therapeutic to the dog so much. And to know that I can actually let a dog feel that relaxed. Yeah. Oh, you know? absolutely. And, and it's taken practice. It's not something that has just happened overnight for sure. <laughs> so how did, so how did you get into meditation? How did you? Yeah. Um. So I got into meditation when I was just like seeking more peace and calmness in my life. And um, after shortly after my son was born, so where I would have these pockets of time, and I needed to re- recharge and refuel. So it was a time to just be quiet and and still and and just like um, just take everything out of my mind for a little bit. Um, and so I did like a meditation course and I, I really enjoyed it and I found it, you know, really beneficial. It's like a reset button. Yes. Um, and it's just, yeah, just really nice to, uh, to have that. And now, so now you're doing, you're, you're, are you doing like a regular class or something with dogs or you're just starting to, or. No, I, um, I've, I, as far as meditation. Yeah. Yeah, I've so I've released some meditations that um, for my clients and for for um, people that are interested in it. And um, yeah, it's something I'm just continuing to um, to learn about and to grow into. And uh, I feel like it's going to evolve. Um, yeah, I also have a really you know strong interest in yoga as well. Um, and so I'm you know having a, um, have my own yoga practice and then I'm going to be doing a yoga retreat and kind of growing into that as well and just being open to the possibility of where it takes me that's that's yes that's that's right so you do have uh some meditations that are available just gonna need to I don't know oh. if you can see my son I'm gonna yeah. need to check out what's going on just that's second. okay that's okay I can find the links to put in so just being present can start your relationship to understanding your dog and just having somewhere that the dog can feel like it's being itself uh, can just make such a difference. We're going to have to get some, um, I'll get some meditations. I know that she has a link. She, um, that is Miranda's is the mindful canine. 
is her business. And I know that on her page and Facebook that there is a link, that there is a link to get to. Um, I know I was watching a couple of her meditations um, and listening. I think it was a recording. So I'm gonna, we'll find out if she has more. <laughs> So there you go. I'll just kind of do a little recap that shows that if we actually spend the time, if you have a dog that is reacting, that is not listening at all, you have, you have to try and start with the dog that's in front of you. Accept it and try getting close with your dog. Hey. And try doing some meditations. I'm just talking while you're gone. Kind of a no, little, sounds bit good. Of, little bit of a recap. And you do have some, I, I can't remember now. I know I listened to, I think it was a recording um so you have you have something and you also were working with somebody else on that too weren't you did you get were you interviewed in another series um yeah I did I've done some like I did a self-care series recently um, Liz Clifton um yeah so she's another um with Liz coach. Clifton yeah. yeah coaches more people now as used to be in dogs and now coaches people on how to kind of live better better a better life um, yeah. and so yeah so it's all about yeah just bridging that gap for me and and uh helping, I think it's a great place to start both, yeah helping both ends of you know there's always there's an always an imbalance somewhere um and definitely I feel like if we can take that time to be present with ourselves and um you know learn to just quiet our our bodies and our minds and that has a trickle down effect to our dogs for sure like you were saying um you know it does take practice and it does take time like probably the first times you go to try it sit on the sit on a mat or sit on the floor your dogs will you know be wrestling with you or things like that and then if you are calming yourself they'll they'll start to calm down um with you for sure um but i i really feel like um finding ways for ourselves to process stress and if it's also a way that helps our dog process stress then that's great. Like, and, and there's mutual activities. Like we were talking about meditation and mindfulness. That's one um, in, there's one area um, and it can be, but it can be so simple. Like it doesn't even need to be where you sit down on a mat. It can be just, you know, yeah. sitting, just like maybe petting your dog once or twice and taking like a really deep breath, like a longer exhale than an inhale. Um, and even one breath is a meditation, one breath where you're conscious and present, it brings you back to like, you know, and it, especially if you combine that with a tactile, like you're touching your dog and then they're going to feel you release, you know, stress, um, activities. Like I love, I really promote, um, doing like, a, a like a decompression, like mindful walk in nature going somewhere where it's quiet you're not going to see there's it's like reducing the stimulation for both you and your dog we are all so overstimulated we have you know screens and and te constant texts and dings and information overload and our dogs are the same they have you know they live in so, so much of a more intense environment than a lot of times is they're able to deal with um, and so, especially if you have a dog that's living, um, depends on the breed as well. If they're living in a condo where they're constantly stimulated, there's always noise, there's always stuff. They go outside and they might see a fire truck and a person and a dog and a cat and a squirrel. And a, it's like so much. Um, then just to take those breaks where like they just kind of are able to just calm down um, is so, so I feel like it's really important, and especially things that are just quiet um like a chance to test have a nervous system reset um and finding yeah what that what that looks like for you and what works for you is is i think really important and yes and and it just it takes you know mindset is a is a big part of of um mm -hmm. i know i i was really focusing on mindset body language and connection kind of mm -hmm. as as things but mindset you know everything is evol evolving <laughs> um but mindset is so important and it takes practice. Uh, it's something that I'm sure I've been practicing for years and years. 
and and just just like be even being around a bunch of dogs and when you can just put yourself in that calm it, it's mm-hmm. it, they can it can be a ripple effect but, pr- mm-hmm. but it's actually like you say taking a breath and, and being conscious of it and being in that second in that moment with yourself um it's contagious <laughs> and with dogs especially and and it was so important for people nowadays because i think we're also we all are so stressed right now you know we're, you're in canada right we're both in canada there's lots of things going on in the world right now and and we feel it i mean even just saying that i can feel a bit of my tension myself and i know my yeah. dogs feel it so oh practicing, absolutely practicing yeah. this that's why i think this idea of meditation and and starting from there with the dog that's with you mm-hmm. um i guarantee it's worth it Oh, absolutely. Effort into and, and I think, and this is me talking to myself, like when we get busier, um, that stuff and the first stuff to go. Like for instance, and I can I'm saying that because that's me today. We were getting ready to go on a trip. I'm really busy and I've got a lot on the go. And we had friends visiting last night, so we stayed up late. And so for consequence, my day got just a little bit discombobulated. So I feel more tension like you're saying tension in your body stress and I know that I get to sit down and have a meditation and I put it on my you know I have a a list of things I need to do today and I caught myself I wrote all the like to do stuff and then I was thinking I was like okay I and then I wrote in on the top of the list meditate because that's the piece that's going to make everything else go well and possible right so it does it's, I, I, it's I fun, agree. Fun I agree that the, that uh, 15, 20 minutes, whatever, half hour, doesn't matter. It makes a huge difference. 10 minutes. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, and I'm it hoping does, to... it, it a little goes a long way. And I think that is something I emphasize with people with their dogs as well, is that um, it's not about the quantity. It's about the quality and the consistency of the time that they spend. So it's, it's far better for them to spend five minutes, you know, doing a meditation or five minutes connecting and playing with their dog, um, where they're not on their phone, they're not talking to other people, they're not trying to multitask um, and answer emails at the same time or whatever, than it is to, to, you know, and that is often what they need in order to feel like the dog needs in order to feel that everything's in balance right um yeah. and in the absence of that that's when kind of stuff starts to go awry um and I mean that's the same thing with myself and my son or myself and my husband or it's taking those even a couple minutes to be you know in connection you know not distracted fully focused and and with the with the being that you're with whoever you are with um and you know either verbally or non-verbally you know, connecting. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's it's true. It happens all day long in life, and 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 no matter what agenda we have for the day, we have to be aware that it's going to happen and be flexible, right? And be willing to to jump into mm-hmm. that moment if we need to and deal with you know and just it helps to be mindful and and take the breaks and give yourself that that regeneration. What is your recharge if you need it in our busy days? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it, and it trickles to our yeah, dogs. Yeah, absolutely. It trickles to our dogs. I think you made tons mm-hmm. of great points here. I really appreciate it. Um, I know I wanted to quickly mention oh, one, yeah. one. I wanted to mention one thing that I know I was thinking of after, but I still thought it was interesting to mention now that what one of the things, because you're mentioning your history of how you got into dogs, I how you got to where you are, right? The biggest thing, because we had dogs and we didn't have any trainers, we actually had to... I, remember we had to give away dogs that I, that I remember missing for years right and we didn't know things mm. but when I so when I did start working and I worked with rescue I think I was already with rescue so I had a couple of dogs um and I was introduced to rally obedience and I know I was kind of doing things already but just it was just that positive and fun atmosphere that really changed my relationship with dogs all the way when, you know, it's, it's so interesting. And then it's just growing since then, but it sounded similar. I did agility with this crazy rescue dog. Right. right. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and it's, and I worked with lots of boarding dogs and things like that too. And with rescue border collie rescue, I was with for a few years, but um, 
it's really interesting where we've come and where it's going now. And adding this type of thing is just going to be wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be encouraging everybody to be trying with their dog, thinking about mindset and taking that breath and just meditating even for a few minutes a day, a couple of times if you can, but slow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And just recognize, yeah, that it comes like it's those it's those little pauses that allow you to to make progress and be the best version of yourself. And nothing ever comes out of a positive ever comes out of a space of overwhelm or frustration. Um, yeah. So and but, it, you know, those things are going to arise. So if those things arise, pausing, accepting that that's what you're feeling right now. Pot like taking a break stepping away and looking at a way to reset yourself so that um you can come back and be be you know be in a better state a more positive state positive and appreciate um, it's really it's awesome thank you so much i know it's how we're doing here for time i lost track of time <laughs> sorry anyways <laughs> i thank you so much i'll stop recording um Miranda and, and I'm hoping that we're Absolutely. gonna be able, we're gonna be able to try some of this out together is what I would like um we'll see what happens we'll get this out there a bit and see if we can get some response to other people that would be interested too I think we should I think that we it's very healthy yeah for sure oh it's great to chat with you Jody. yeah thank you so much here I'll stop